I don't know who I'm I don't know who I'm talking to oh. come on come on stand I'm out of time I don't want to hold you long somebody knows what I'm talking about somebody's got to if it had not been kind of praise you know what I'm talking about have you ever just been by yourself you know and you just start reflecting then something just you're like oh he brings you back to another time when when he brought you out and so just on the strength of his track record if he if he did it then to touch your neighbor tell him you ain't got no reason to trip now Listen, everybody standing, everybody reach out, grab your hand. We're closing this series and I know this has been different and difficult for some of you. But you know what I didn't mean that the Spirit of the Lord just is ministering right in through here. I, I, I feel it. I feel it. I know it. Thank you, Jesus. Let me say this. Let me say this and then we're going to go. I want you to hear. I want you to hear. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. This is not Pastor Van. This is the Lord. I don't know where you are and I don't know. I don't know the nature of it. We haven't had a chance to sit down and talk. And, but I know in the spirit that you're in a place. And I know that you're in a place and it doesn't honor God. I know that. I know that. And as, as, as I was here and trying to teach and be obedient. I was talking about marriage and even spiritual adultery. But the truth of the matter is God said that this is right for you. This is, this is you. I don't know who you are, but here's what God is saying. What breaks my heart, God, I want you to get this. What breaks my heart, you, you read it when you get home. We read it earlier. When you look at chapter 12, David sleeps with Bathsheba and he tries to pretend like Ain't nothing happened. He tries to cover it up and then he just tries to move on. And the enemy's been trying to tell you that, uh, just stand where you are. It's not a big deal. No, but it is a big deal. God sends the prophet Nathan to David and God says, everything I've done for you, I, I, I removed Saul, I gave you Judah, I gave you Israel. He said, I gave you Saul's daughter and I gave you wives. And then he says, and if that was not enough, he said, I would have given you so much more. He said, but you, but you had to go off and do something that didn't bring me honor. See, the enemy wants you to think that God doesn't see. Some of you come in, you're like, how does Pastor Van know? He must have been on the phone. He must be reading my mail. I'm not reading your mail. God is. And when I'm praying and laying on my face every week, God reads your mail, then sends me a spiritual email, downloads it into my spirit and says, say this or preach that. I don't know who you are, but I do know that the enemy is trying to kill you. This is why Proverbs 5 says, she is dancing down the primrose path to death. The enemy's telling you, it's okay, just one time, just one more time. He's trying to kill you. And the reason that God sent me here to preach this message and preach this series is because he loves you that much. He's saying, David, don't do it. David's whole family is destroyed because it is one act. His daughter is raped by his son. And you know what? He can't even say anything to his son because what is, what is he going to say? Don't do what I did? And because he doesn't say anything, his other son becomes so angry that he tries to kill him. But, but yeah, David, David prays Psalm 51, creating me a clean heart. Yeah, God forgives you, but there's still consequences for your actions. If I go in here and rob a bank, 
I'm, I'm gonna rob the bank and I'll probably get caught. And I'll be in jail and I'll lift my hands and I'll say, God, forgive me. I don't know what got over me. We're just trying to raise money for the church, you know. <laughs> just trying to get that building, God. Just trying to get the building. And I'll raise my hands and say, God, forgive me. And he'll forgive me. But you know what? I am still going to be in jail. I don't know who you are, but I don't want you to blow it. The enemy's trying to kill you. And so I want to pray for you really quickly. And then wherever you are, you know, you know who you are. You know where you are all over this building in any overflow. If you know that this is you and you've got to make a decision to rededicate your life, you've got to make a decision to give your life to Christ. Maybe you've given your life to Christ, but, but you've got to make a decision to get connected to a church home. Or maybe you have a church home, but you keep coming to the worship center because that season with that church is over. And you got to finally get connected to a place where you can grow where you go. Wherever you are, when I finish praying for you, I just want you to step out of the aisles. I'm not going to pump you. I'm not going to prime you. This is about you and God. Either you will live the life that the enemy wants you to live and the end is destruction. Destroy, destroying your family, destroying your future. Either you're going to go down that road or you're going to say, God, I want to be faithful. I want to be faithful to my wife. I want to be faithful to you. I want to be faithful in how I handle everything that you've given me. If that's you, as soon as I finish praying, I want you to step out of the aisles and get down here. And I'm the first one. I'm standing right here. Because even being the pastor, if you're not careful, the enemy can still get me. Paul says that even after I preach, I beat my body so that after I finish preaching, I'm not disqualified. I don't, I don't want to be on TV, folk pointing at see I, see, I knew, Pastor. See, I knew. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for people all over this house. God, no matter what overflow of VIP room that they're in, whether they're in this sanctuary, the balcony, or